All right, more powerful stuff. Joining us now, New York Congresswoman, we welcome back Elise Stefanik, chair of the House Republican Conference. Elise, great to see you. I mean, in this particular case, she told the, uh, the Christian, whoever was shouting out about Jesus, he's at the wrong rally. Okay. But you know what? You could generalize by just saying religion of any kind when you plow through the Al Smith dinner, the Knights of Columbus, which is all anti-Catholicism, and then I've got a beauty coming up uh, about um, Israel co committing genocide. But, I mean, the Democrats seem to be running against Christians and against Jews and against religion in general, Elise Stefanik. It is a disgrace. Kamala Harris has revealed so much about herself and her vision for America these last few weeks. The fact that she said uh, that that individual was not welcome, President Trump was correct to say that we welcome believers and Christians uh, to support this America First movement. And she, Kamala Harris must not understand our founding principles. We were founded on the Judeo-Christian ethic in the United States of America, and it is so off-putting to voters. And this, of course, comes after you mentioned this, Larry, her skipping the Al Smith dinner, which is a great bipartisan dinner traditionally that raises money for Catholic charities in my home state of New York. It's a must, you know, a must go to event. Typically, the last candidate who didn't go there was Walter Mondale. And we remember how much he lost by. And President Trump absolutely knocked it out of the park with his spot on jokes, with his tone. And of course, the clip you're referencing is when Kamala Harris agreed with the radical pro-Hamas talking points blaming Israel for genocide. She said that individual was right. That individual is so wrong, and the American people understand that that individual is wrong, and it was just pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist talking points. The United States and the American people strongly support Israel. Elise, let me uh, play this tape. I want, I want to play this tape about the uh, genocide charge. Here it comes. Take a listen, please. Listen, it, what he's talking about, it's, it, this, it's real. And so that's not the subject that I came to discuss today, but it's real, and I respect his voice. I mean, that's pretty staggering. Uh, genocide in Israel is real, and I respect his points. I don't know that they've made any attempt to even change that or modify that or cover that up the way they do on things like fracking and other many subjects. But the point is, it's an impossible, ridiculous, awful, biased position. I mean, that's the best I can say. It's not just bias, Larry. It's flat out wrong. It's the Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists who are seeking to commit genocide against Israel, not the other way around. Israel is fighting for its very existence. It's fighting for its self-defense. And it's Hamas and Hezbollah who are using civilians as civilian shields. Uh, and the United States and our next president must stand strongly with Israel and bring that moral leadership and moral clarity to these issues. President Trump brings that moral leadership. And and brings that moral clarity. But you know what was so telling about these comments, Larry, is they're off the cuff. Mm. And she's revealed so much about what her actual positions are, no matter how much her campaign is having to correct these disgraceful statements. She's saying these things unscripted, off the cuff, revealing who she really is, how radical she really is, and out of touch with the vast majority of the American people's position, whether it's that we respect Christians in this country. I am a proud Catholic in this country, and I, I am so proud that President Trump has so many believers who are supporting his campaign. Uh, we also are a country that stands strongly with Israel, and we need to fire the administration, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who have turned their back on Israel at their most important time of need. So, at least you know what? Let's go back to that. You know, um, a lot of people think missing the Al Smith dinner was a turning point in the campaign. A lot of people think that missing the Al Smith dinner in New York uh, is giving Trump the momentum in the campaign and is showing up in the polls. Now, let's just talk some politics here. And, you know, if you couple that with this phenomenal thing he did in uh, Pennsylvania, showing up at McDonald's and dishing out some fries and whatever, with a smile on his face, I mean, it just looks like... I, we're going to talk about this in our political panel, but I got you here. I mean, it just seems like all of a sudden this thing's breaking wide open. What do you make of it? 
I make of it that the media, the mainstream media, had propped up Kamala Harris. And the more the American people are hearing directly from her, the less support she has. I agree with you, Larry, that the Al Smith dinner was an important inflection point. And here's why. Because unlike the mainstream media's attacks incessantly on President Trump, this was vintage President Trump at his best, which is most of the time, actually. He has a great sense of humor. He has a great understanding of culturally where we are as a country. And the vast majority of the American people, uh, our America First policies are policies that they agree with. Mm. And the fact that Kamala Harris is so out of touch that they think skipping a Catholic charities dinner mm. is going to appeal to the majority of voters, they thought that was going to be a good political decision. It shows how radicalized and far left today's Democratic Party. And then let's take the McDonald's visit. This is a home run for President Trump. <laughs> this is why he appeals so much to hardworking men and women across this country. Mm. Uh, he knocked it out of the park. I think it was a brilliant strategy. And we're going to con continue working on behalf of the Trump campaign, earning the vote in these key states, but across the country. And politically, Larry, I think these House congressional races, which I'm paying a lot of attention to since I'm a House member in leadership, Kamala Harris is underperforming where Joe Biden was in 2020 mm. in every single House race yeah. in the country. Yeah. That bodes very well to not only win the presidency, but gain seats in the House and flip the Senate. All right. Good luck on the campaign trail. Elisa Fanning, thanks for visiting with us. We appreciate it very, very much.